welcome back. My name is Dawn and this is Living a Word-Filled Life. And we are on part four, talking about favor. Favor is a good thing. It's not fair. It is not fair, but it is a good thing. And um, we had defined favor as special treatment. Special treatment by other people, special treatment by God. And um, again, it's not always fair, but it's available to you. Um, let's take a look at a verse. This is um, part of our review we're going to do, but a verse that my husband and I say every day. And we just wake up in the morning. Sometimes we say this before our feet even hit the floor, but we declare God's favor over our day. And it's from Psalm chapter 5, verse 12, and it's from the NIV version. It says, Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. So God wants to favor you, but you have to declare his favor. You have to want his favor. You have to seek after him and his favor finds you. His favor follows you. Um, favor with God is relational. It's not positional. For example, because you go to church on Sunday and you check your little church box, I'm not saying don't go to church on Sunday. I'm saying sometimes we get into a, a position where we just go to church because we feel we have to. We go out of obligation. We're not paying attention. We're not listening. We're not worshiping God. We're just there because we got our bulletin. We got our receipt. We went to church on Sunday. Therefore, we should have favor with God because look, God, I was good. I went to church. Being good or not being good has nothing to do with God's favor. Relationship with Jesus, relationship with others is what gets you favor. If, if you hear about a job and there's 500 people applying for this job, but your best friend is best friends with the hiring manager, guess what? They're gonna show you favor. It's relationship. It's, it's who you know and how well you know them. So favor comes when you have a relationship with Jesus. Not a knowledge, not in the position of, I went to church, I read my Bible every day for eight hours. No, it's your relationship with Jesus. That's what gets you favor. Let's see uh, what the Bible says about favor, and let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 66, verse 21, and this is from the NET version. It says, I show special favor to the humble and contrite who respect what I have to say. So what the word is saying is that God shows favor to those who respect his word, who listen to what the word says. So what does God say? What does Jesus say to do? How to be? Well, let's take a look. Um, Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 through 40, um, in the NIV version, says, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So Jesus kind of summed up all the commandments, all the law into two commandments. Love God and love your neighbor. So God is seeking people who want to do what he says. Well, what did he say? He says to love God and to love your neighbor. God wants to favor you. He wants to give you the desire of your heart. Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 37 verses 4 through 5 and this is in the Passion Translation. It says, May God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life and he will provide for you what you desire the most. Give God the right to direct your life 
And as you trust him along the way, you'll find that he pulled it off perfectly. So you give God permission. You give Jesus permission to be in charge of your life. And you don't do that just because you go to church. Again, we go back to relationship. You need to say with your mouth, Jesus, I give you permission to be in charge of my life. And then he directs your paths. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. And along the way, he will provide for you the desire of your heart. And I um, told you this little favor story last week, but for those of you who didn't hear it, um, I had seen a story about this oil that was coming out of a Bible. It was, it was a miracle. And... Through a series of events, of God events, they are from Georgia, but they ended up in California. And they were gonna come on a day that wasn't, I wasn't able to go because it's like a four hour drive from me and I didn't wanna drive there at night by myself. Anyway, God provided a way and the oil, the Bible with the oil coming out of it was in California, far away from Georgia on a Monday which was my birthday. I got to go and see the Bible, see the miracle with my own eyes and get some oil from that Bible. That was a desire of my heart. But you know what God did? He said, you know what? I'm going to up the ante here and I'm going to show you that it's me. I'm going to show you that I'm the one arranging this for you. And he did it on my birthday. Isn't that just so awesome. I just get so excited every time I think about it. Like God wants to do that kind of stuff for you. He wants to get you a birthday present, but you have to let him. You have to let him be in control. You have to let him guide your life and you have to be obedient in the things that he tells you to do. And some of the things he tells you to do, like move to California, <laughs> you know, you may it may not be your favorite thing to do, but you need to be obedient. God has a reason for asking you to do things. We still don't fully know why we're in California, but we know, 100% know that God sent us here. So you just have to be willing. You have to be willing and obedient. God is not looking to favor perfect people. He's looking to favor people who are endeavoring to put him first place in their life. Because there are no perfect people. But God looks at your heart. And I'm just going to remind you of a scripture that Paul said, and, and it, it just shows you that we're all the same. Like nobody is perfect and we have good intentions and we mean to do well and we wake up every day saying, you know, I'm not going to do anything I shouldn't do today. But that's not how it works out. We end up doing things we didn't plan to do, that we don't want to do, that we, we're trying to be good. And you just, you're human. And Paul mentioned this in um, Romans chapter 7, verse 15 in the NIV version. He says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. So see, even Paul, who wrote most of the Bible, was human. And, and so God is not looking for you to be perfect. He is looking for those who are diligently seeking him. He rewards those who diligently seek him. And the good news is God is able to look at your heart. So even though you're doing things you didn't want to do and, and you know, you're, you're in a sin that you don't want to be in, you repent of that sin and you ask God for forgiveness and he remembers your sin no more according to the word. And then you go on, you move forward. But quit thinking that, oh, well, you know, that only happens to perfect people or that only happens to good people or that only happens to people who don't have this going on in their life. No, God is no respecter of persons. His favor will come upon you. And, and again, you have to seek it. You have to want it. You have to declare it. But you have to put God first. You have to put him first. And you're not seeking God for the favor. You're seeking God for God. You're seeking God for Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And then the favor is a byproduct of that. 
Let's take a look at Exodus chapter 33, 12b, and it's God talking about Moses. He says, this is Moses saying, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. So Moses found favor in the sight of God. Moses was a murderer. Let's not forget that. <laughs> but Moses was seeking God. He was endeavoring to, to place God first in his life. But everybody makes mistakes. Everybody sins. Everybody falls off the wagon. But you have to repent and get back on the wagon. You, do. you need to get out of your head that, oh, I need to do this. I need to, I need to read my Bible this much today. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to be, you know, I have my little good checklist and you get a star at the end of the day if you complete five out of ten. That's not how life works. You keep Jesus in your life, in your daily walk every day. You keep God first. You keep him first. You don't put him on the shelf and take him down and dust him off on Sunday. He should be in your mind, in your head, every part of every day and everything that you do. Pray without ceasing. And praying without ceasing is, is just talking to God throughout the day, talking to Jesus throughout the day. And if you have to, in your head, picture him sitting right next to you, then, then do that. Because he is. Even though you don't see him with your natural eyes, he is right next to you every day. Every day. Holy Spirit is inside of you every day. God knows your thoughts every day. So don't ignore him. Don't go through your day and ignore God. Don't go through your day and ignore Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I did that for years. Years I did that, wasted. But thankfully, now I don't. And my life has drastically changed because of that. It's, you know, when I was living in, in poverty and in lack and, you know, woe is me, what am I gonna do? And this guy did this to me and oh, it's so horrible and oh, poor little pitiful me. No. You, you get back up, you take Jesus by the hand, and you move forward. And your life will change. But when you stay back in your little pity party, and you get out your little party favors, and you have your little pity party, guess who comes to the pity party with extra favors and some cake? The devil. He loves pity parties. He has on his little tiara with his horns, and he comes and hangs out at your pity party. Because he wants you to feel bad. He wants you to feel sorry for yourself. And he wants you to just wallow and stay in that. Life is too short, my friend, to have a pity party. You need to put the favors away, pack them up, put them in a box, and have a little bonfire. Have a pity party, favor, bonfire. And, and stop it. You will have a much better life if you put God first in your life. Seek him first and all these things will be added unto you. You seek God. You seek him. You don't seek money. You don't seek wealth. You don't seek fame. You don't seek fortune. You seek God. That's all you need and all these things will be added unto you. Let's see what else the Bible says about favor. Proverbs 35, I'm gonna read two translations. Um, the first one is in the NIV. It says, for he who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. So whoever finds Jesus obtains favor from the Lord. Now the Passion Translation of the same verse, Proverbs 8, 35 says, for the fountain of life pours into you every time that you find me. And this is the secret of growing in the delight and the favor of the Lord. So those who find God have his favor. But how do you find God? How do you find God so that when you find him, you get his favor? Well, let's see what the Bible says. In Jeremiah 29, 13, in the NIV version, it says, You will seek me 
and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So the answer is you're seeking God with all your heart. You truly, truly want to find Jesus. You want him in your life. You want him in your everyday life. That is how you find him. You just got to look. It's like a hide and seek game, but the game is rigged. Jesus is standing behind the skinny tree and you can see him. So it's not very hard. As long as you're, you're seeking him with your whole heart, he's right there where you can see him. So as Kevin Zadai says, it's all rigged in your favor. So Jesus is letting you seek him, but he's like, I'm over here behind the tree. And you can see him, but you gotta seek him first. Who else had favor in the Bible? Well, we know Mary, the mother of Jesus, had favor with God in the Bible. And we see that in Luke chapter one, verse 30 in the NIV version. It says, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Was Mary perfect? No. But there's a little indication in the next, um, in a few verses down actually, in Luke 138, that kind of gives us a clue as to Mary's state of mind, like where she was. And this is from the ESV version, Luke 138. It says, and Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So Mary was not perfect. But according to this, it's, it's showing an indication that she's like, whatever you, whatever you want me to do, God. She had a relationship. She had a relationship with God to where she said, be it done to me, Lord, whatever you want me to do. She didn't say, no, that's too hard. No, no one's going to believe me that, you know, I'm a virgin and I'm having a baby. She, she didn't say any of that because she had an inward relationship with God. So that's all God's asking for from each of us is a relationship. And Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 in the ESV version says, If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So we see so many people who are favored by God, who have favor. They're eating the good of the land, but they're willing and obedient to do what God says to do. They have a relationship with God, so they know what he's saying to do. Well, some people say, well, you know, I don't hear the voice of God. Well, are you listening? Do you give him time to talk to you? Are you, are you spending time with him throughout your day? If you start to spend time with him throughout your day, you will hear his voice. I promise you, you will hear his voice. David found favor, and it says in Acts 7, verse 46a in the ESV version, David found favor in God's sight. Was David perfect? A uh, big old nope, <laughs> he was not. He was an adulterer, he was a liar, he was a murderer. Oh, but wait, it says he had favor in God's sight. How could that be? Well, David had a relationship with God. He had a relationship with him. He knew God, he talked to God every day. He knew God's heart, God knew his heart. So, you're gonna sin. I know, that's a shocker to some of you. You're gonna sin a lot, but you're gonna repent a lot. You need to remember that you're not perfect. You're gonna mess up. So you might as well not beat yourself up about it. I'm not saying to just say, oh, you know, make light of a sin, no. But you repent and, and God forgives you and you move forward, you move forward with your life. That's what David did, that's what Moses did. You, you Forget about it. God forgets about it. You might as well forget about it too. But so many times we stay trapped in the sin because we think, oh, now we're a bad person because we did this thing. Oh, now, you know, we're not worthy. That is ridiculous. 
You need to move along, sister. Move along, brother. You've got to forgive yourself because God forgave you. He's not remembering it anymore, so you need to forget it. Just move forward. Otherwise, you're gonna stay stuck in the past. If there's unforgiveness, forgive them. Move forward, move ahead. Otherwise, and we talked about this like, if Joseph, when he was falsely imprisoned, he was falsely uh, made a slave, when all that happened to him, he didn't wallow in that. He, he sought God and he ended up moving to be the second highest in command of all of Egypt. But that's because he didn't wallow in the slavery. He didn't wallow in the prison. He didn't get the party favors out, the pity party favors. And that's what happens. And then, you know, you start to, the, it's kind of like the people that leave, leave the Christmas lights on their house all year. That's what happens. You got your pity party favors up and you keep them up on your house all year long. And then you forget, you don't even see them anymore. Ooh, that's good. I just came up with that. <laughs> so, what happens when you have your Christmas lights up on your house and you don't even know that they're there anymore, you don't see them anymore because it's it's part it becomes part of the structure. But the same with your pity party favors is if you're having your pity parties and every day you're 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 wallowing in whatever's bad in your life, whatever is not the way you want it to be, then you don't even see it anymore. It's there. The enemy knows it's there because he helped you decorate. But you don't even see that it's there anymore. And so you've got to take them down. <laughs> you got to get out there on a ladder. Take them down. One light at a time. One strand at a time. And, and, and move forward. We're going to take a look at one last passage of scripture, and this is in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18 and 19, and this is in the Passion Translation. For this reason, the Lord is still waiting to show his favor to you, so he can show you his marvelous love. He waits to be gracious to you. He sits on his throne, ready to show mercy to you. For Yahweh is the Lord of justice, faithful to keep his promises, Overwhelmed with bliss are all those who entwine their hearts in him, waiting for him to help them. Yes, the people of Zion who live in Jerusalem will weep no more. How compassionate he will be when he hears your cries for help. He will answer you when he hears your voice. So, so often we are waiting on God, but he is waiting on us. He is waiting on you. So you need to invite him into your daily life, your daily activities. Keep him front and center of your life and you will see your life start to change. Next week, what we're gonna do is we're going to have like an anniversary review. It's a year. We've been doing this for almost a year and by the time the next study comes out we'll be rounding off the end of the first year so for those of you who have been with living a word filled life for the first year and there's some of you who've watched every single video <laughs> almost well we're probably number 50 now so 52 videos i appreciate you being here for those who are new i also appreciate you being here so um i'm going to do a review of just a little synopsis of what we covered this year because believe it or not we've we've covered a lot we've come a long way in this first year and um if you haven't made jesus lord of your life there's a little video at the end of this video that explains how to do that so you be blessed and i'll see you next week thanks for being here bye Dawn and I'm with Living a Word-Filled Life 
and I wanted to talk to you briefly about salvation. And going to church doesn't guarantee you a spot in heaven. I don't care if you go every Sunday. Being a good person does not guarantee you a spot in heaven. What you need is salvation. Salvation was a gift given to us from the Father through Jesus. But as it, with any gift, you have to open the gift. You have to use the gift. And the way to use that gift is displayed in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that's what you need to do. So we're going to do that right now. If you're not saved, I'm going to say this, and you repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and into my life. I repent of my sins. I receive your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's all you need to do.